love hearing the joyful noises this morning, Amen. having our kids in the service. It's always more lively, and I love that. It's not something to be embarrassed or ashamed of. We, we love having our kids. We, we love that God has given us that blessing and that gift. So. Well, our scripture this morning was read by Noah. Thank you, Noah, for reading our scripture. I'm not going to read it to you again. It's a scripture that was full to me as I read it this week, full of two very strong, very conflicting emotions. <laughs> the first one being confusion, and the other one being joy. Two emotions that accompanied this experience that Jesus' closest friends and followers had on that day, on the day of his resurrection. And why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they feel that? You and I know on Friday that Sunday is coming. In fact, I think I heard that this week so many times, I didn't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> you and I know the rest of the story. We know how it all fits together, and we have 2,000 years of witnesses to back up the claims of this resurrection. We have our own personal experiences of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, of encountering the risen Christ. But on that day, they had no idea what was going on. No idea. They had no clue. And I think if you and I had been in their shoes, we would have experienced the same things. We would have felt the same way. For years, they had followed him. They had listened to his teaching. They had witnessed his miracles and even his glory. They believed that he was the Messiah. They believed that he was the one who would rescue God's people, Israel, from their cruel oppressors. He would be their hero, arrayed in armor and getting ready for battle. He would lead the charge, but he didn't. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. They wanted him to deliver them, but he didn't. They woke up on that Easter Sunday morning. The emperor was still on the throne. Their rulers were still over them. Their taxes were still there. I think it's interesting that tax day and Easter fell on the same weekend this year. They woke up and their lives had not changed. He didn't do what they expected. Instead, he surrendered without a fight. He didn't stand up for himself. He wouldn't put up a defense at his trial. He didn't even speak up for himself. He let them bind him and whip him and beat him and spit on him and mock him, pull out his beard. And then he carried his cross to the place where they would kill him. And they woke up that morning thinking, maybe they were wrong. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe he wasn't the Messiah. Maybe they'd all been conned by a smooth talker who knew just the right things to say. Maybe they were wrong. And he was just a good teacher intent on reminding Israel of God's love and mercy. Maybe. Their maybes were endless. <laughs> Their maybes were endless. What do you do when your dreams come crashing down? The disciples hold up in an upper room, one with a good, solid lock on the door. The women gathered their spices, and they went to finish the job of burying this man that they had followed, who treated them like no man had ever treated them before, like persons of worth and value like bearers of the divine image, like God's children, not like objects, not like slaves, but companions for the journey. 
The women rolled up their sleeves and they got to work as soon as the Sabbath had ended. And they set out together to anoint the body before it had another day to swelter in the tomb. When they arrived there, they were met with a puzzle. The stone was rolled away. Another gospel writer says that they had been talking about it on the way there. How are we going to get the stone out of the way? When they got there, it was gone. It had been rolled away. The door was open and unguarded. And even worse, the tomb was empty. What had happened? Who had been here? And where was the body? And how do they now carry out their final tribute to their friend without a body? The questions multiplied by the minute. Not once did they dare to hope that they would see him alive again. That thought didn't cross their minds as they stood there on that Easter Sunday morning. We got up this morning and we went to Cottonwood and we sang songs and we were joyful because we know that when the empty tomb was there, it meant that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, but they didn't know. (laughs) They had no idea. Here was this empty tomb. Mary took charge, running to find Peter and John, and she told them what they'd seen. John and Peter ran back to the tomb. John apparently was a track star, outran Peter, but he stopped at the door. He stopped at the door, but Peter, being Peter, being just who he is, ran right into the tomb, looked around. Nothing. Nothing. stood in the space that had just held the body of their friend, and it was empty. Just the wrappings, just the cloth binding that had wrapped his corpse lying on the shelf to show that the space had been used at all. They walked back to where they had been, scratching their heads. More questions than before, no answers and no idea of what to do next. Mary stayed, overwhelmed with grief and frustration, unable to perform this last service for her teacher, she wept. Through her tears, she gazes again into the tomb, and there, where minutes before was darkness and empty space, sat two angels. I don't think... (laughs) I put myself in Mary's shoes. How could the day get weirder? Right? They had lost everything, and now they've lost the body, and now there are angels. What next? She saw these angels, and they speak to her. They speak to her of her tears. They say, Why are you weeping? Because they know, like we know, that Jesus is risen, but she doesn't know. Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? She turns as she answers, as if to search for him once again, and just wanting to know where his body is. She sees him. Thinking he's the gardener, she asks him where they have taken him. She volunteers to go and to carry him back and put him where he belongs. And he speaks her name, Mary. And she knows. She knows it's Jesus. Her confusion turns to joy in a flash, in a second. One moment, overwhelmed by grief, tears flow again as she throws herself at his feet There's no logic in that moment. (laughs) There's no time to think and ponder. There's no time to figure it all out. He's alive, and that's all that matters for her. That's all that matters. She's consumed by a joy that is as overpowering as her grief had been 
just moments before. Jesus gave her a message. Go back and tell them. Go back and tell them that I'm alive, that I'm risen from the dead. When she gets there, she tells them, and other gospel accounts tell us that as she told them this story, they didn't believe her. They didn't believe her. It was news that was too good to be true. And surely, just the delusions of a woman lost in despair. So that night, while they have the doors bolted, Jesus stands in their midst. And he blesses them. He doesn't come and stand among them and go, now why didn't you remember when I said this and this and this, that I was going to the grave, that I'd be back in three days? Why didn't you listen? I told you the plan. Why didn't you believe me? That's not what he does. He stands in their midst and he says to them, peace. He says to them, peace. He imparts to them divine wholeness, healing, restoration, forgiveness for their faithfulness, all in one breath, all in one word. And he begins to speak of them, speak to them of the mission that he has for them. The Father has sent him, and now he is sending them to carry his message of the kingdom, to bring hope and healing and light where darkness and brokenness and resignation have reigned for so long. Now, if this were a fairy tale, at this point we would say, and they all lived happily ever after. But we know that that's not true. It's not true in this case. They didn't immediately lose their questions or their doubt or their need. They did not immediately receive the peace that he offered. They did not immediately understand their mission like us, they were real, live human beings with real lives and real hardship. But on that day, on the resurrection day, their confusion was overcome by their joy. Jesus is alive. They walked with him. They listened to him again for a time before he ascended into heaven and he promised them that they would not be left alone. That they would not be left alone in their questions. That promise is ours as well. We've been given the Holy Spirit to guide us in our real lives, with our real hardships, with our real questions and our real doubts. Today, we celebrate the day that their confusion turned to joy and we can join our joy with theirs because in rising from the dead, he defeated the last stronghold, the last fear. Jesus has conquered death and hell and the grave. And no matter what we experience in our earthly lives, we know that we do not walk alone. And the victory that he has won is ours as well. Jesus lives, and so do we. Free to live in this bodily life. Free to look forward to a life that does not end. Free to know that our lives can have eternal significance as we choose to follow him. Christ has risen. Hallelujah.